time. It's everywhere. Watches, phones, alarm clocks, ovens, microwaves, the news, computers and egg timer. Gadgets made in China. Today, a single affluent family has more timepieces in their home than an entire medieval country. A typical person consoles clocks several dozen times a day. Hi. Holy mackerel. It's 2.30. Everything we do has to be done on time. Alarm clock wakes you up at 6.30 a.m. Microwave your breakfast, 30 seconds. Brush your teeth, 2 minutes. The electric toothbrush beeps when it's time to stop. Run. The stopwatch sounds at 30 minutes. Catch the 8 a.m. train. You clock in. 60 minutes for lunch. You clock out. The 6 o'clock news. Watch TV adverts costing a thousand pound per second. Brush teeth. Two minutes again. Sleep, eight hours. Time to do it again. Time is a commodity. You've got time, you have time, you need time. Something happens, what time did it happen? Do you have the time? What time should we meet? How much time have we got? I want to know, why does the concept of time rule our lives? Because it wasn't always like this. Less than 300 years ago, time held little power. In Britain, measuring time was always inaccurate. Every British city had its own local time, and these times could differ up to 30 minutes. You could be in London and it would be 12 o'clock, Liverpool 12.20, and Norwich 11.50. You set off to a new city and no one would be able to predict what time they would arrive. But since there were no trains, no phones, and no travel timetables, who cared? Then, the Industrial Revolution hit. Capitalism, production, factories, assembly lines, workers, everything had to be precise. One worker oversleeps and the production line stalls. The rise and fall of production rests on the worker's ability to work as a cohesive unit. Each worker must arrive at the factory at exactly the same time, eat lunch at exactly the same time, regardless of whether they are hungry or not. The bell sounds and the shift is over. Everyone goes home, regardless of whether the project is done. This is how factories work. And this timetabled existence didn't stop at factories. It was used as a template for almost all human activities. Schools, hospitals, the corner shops. Even in places with no assembly lines, the timetable ruled supreme. If the shift in the factory ended at 5pm, then the pub better be open by 5.05. Woohoo! Public transport had a huge part to play in the rise of the timetable. In 1840, the first train timetable was issued in Britain. The trains were fast, so their old quirky differences in local hours became a nuisance. So in 1847, British train companies put their heads together and agreed that all train timetables would run to Greenwich Observatory time, rather than the local time of cities. Loads of institutions followed suit. Then in 1880, the British government declared that all timetables in Britain must follow Greenwich time. This was the first time in human history that a country adopted a national time and made its population live according to an artificial clock, rather than a local one, or sunrise-sunset cycles. This triggered the beginning of a global network of timetables. The sacred timetable of existence orchestrates our life every single day, and yet most of us don't even realise it. So where does that leave us? No matter how much we like or dislike life's timetable, we can't go back and reverse the industrial revolution. The only choice we have left is what we do with our time. Look at this chart. Regardless of where you live in the world, you'd be pretty happy if you could live to 90 years old. This chart is what 90 years looks like in weeks. Every row of weeks makes up one year. You're looking at how many weeks it takes to turn a newborn baby into a 90 year old. It kind of feels like our lives are made up of a countless number of weeks. But there they are, fully countable, staring you in the face. And that's if you're lucky to live till 90 years old. I'm 22. I'm about here on the chart. But then my dad, he's 59 and he's here. And even more depressingly, the average life expectancy in the UK is 79, not 90. In China, it's 75. And if my dad was living in Nigeria, he would already be 365 weeks over his life expectancy. Sometimes life seems really short. 
and other times it seems impossibly long. But one thing this chart shows is that our time is finite. Those are your weeks, and they're all you've got. And that is scary. The problem is, we often fill our lives with timetables rather than actual time. Precious time. Time that feels like when you're in the middle of it, it could be infinite. It would be impossible to not let time rule our lives. But we could be more aware of it. We're surrounded by clocks, but they tend to not prompt us to do more. They prompt us to obey more, to this all-consuming timetable that society seems to live by. So think more about time, and the time you have. And remember, even your life is quantified by it. Don't let time own you. You own your time. <laughs>